Ew. Look at all this rust. Gross. Ew. It's my EVAP box. Rotten. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Now I'm over here with my 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. And I've been driving around with a check engine light. And as you can see, I have the check engine light. That is a good old EVAP leak. And it is due to an EVAP leak. I got a gross leak and a small leak. And I'm ready to take off this bumper so I could go ahead and mess with this, uh, this old trailer hitch thing that I got going on. That's going to be in another video. Well, obviously, there's no trailer hitch there, but there will be. So that's what the video is about. But right now, since I'm taking off this bumper cover, I got to take a look at what's going on inside this really rusty box now that is my evap canister and it could be leaking that could be causing me my check engine lights so i gotta take a look at it in this video all right guys now check this out this is a whole new other evap canister that i pulled from the junkyard i figured heck if what i got going on there is broken then it's good to have some extra parts so I got a whole nother system in here, extra tubing, extra parts. So if I need it, I'll have it. We can mess with this uh, as soon as we find out what's going on in there. So to start, we're gonna take off this bumper. All right, right in here in our bumper under this little piece of weather stripping, pop out these fasteners. I got more down here. Now we also have a T15 Torx right in here. Now you can come over to your wheel well, and these are plastic rivets, so these are gonna have to break off like that. Okay, once you've broken off all three rivets on both sides, you can go ahead and pull out this little wheel well liner right there. That'll give you some room because there is a 10 millimeter little tiny fastener right here. And, of course, if your Jeep is rusty and corroded like mine, the bolt, of course, will snap off. Yep, that's right. Once you break all the bolts on both sides, uh, you can go ahead and pop this out right here. There's a couple clips right there. One and two. When you work those out, the bumper just slides off. Wow, look at this. Welcome to a rusty reality show. <laughs> this is real life. This is a real rusty life. Uh, not looking good, so I'm going to take some of this stuff apart. And of course, I'll uh, start pulling bolts until I'm able to drop this EVAP system and see what's going on in there. All right, I really want to get this crusty, rotten tow hook out of here. Uh, this bolt looks so bad. This bolt desperately needs to be torched but I think I'm going to forego the torsions because I got a gas tank right here and it's empty. That means there's a lot of fumes in there and fumes plus fire equals boom, boom. So I'm gonna use some PB Blast on all these bolts. Here we go. Don't ever buy the PB Blast in a gallon where you fill your own cans. Stuff always leaks and then when you need it to spray, it doesn't work. I'm not a fan of this system. Still a nice tow hook. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Duck. You're the man, bro. I should probably have on goggles, safety glasses, or something. <laughs> it's rust falling everywhere. Wow, look how nice this bolt was. <laughs> That's a freak occurrence. I might frame this. All right, there's a bolt up there. I wanna make sure it's well lubricated. I'm gonna try to cheat through this crack in the frame. Get the back of it. There we 
go. Oh, I think I got it. It's got to be that deep creep stuff. <laughs> it's good. I don't think this has to come all the way out. I'm just going to slide this up. Yeah, that's it. That bolt. Oh, come on. There we go. Look at that. Bolt still in place. Get this on an extension. This is in the wheel well. That's off. And the last one should be right above it. Huh? <laughs> there we go. Wow. This thing is nasty and filthy and nasty and filthy. <laughs> Let's take this apart. Move that plug out of the way. And, oh, gross. Oh man, look at all this rust that just came down in this one little area. Holy Northeast Jeep. And look at this. Already, this thing just kind of fell down. And this <laughs> this tube is cracked wide open, so this could definitely be the cause for the gross leak. I'll inspect all this stuff up in here. Make sure it's kosher. And then we'll take a look at this box. Nasty. Well, all right, guys, I spent the rest of the afternoon scrubbing and cleaning and turning something that looked like this ugly, rotten EVAP box into something that looks like this. Nice and clean and freshly painted and dry now. I reassembled everything together using the new stuff that was cleaner. Now all I got to do is connect a couple tubes, this part right here, this one that was majorly split right there. I'm gonna cut this right about up here, past this little bend, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use this splice from the line that came with the other box. I'm gonna go ahead and splice that on. Same thing with this one right here, this little elbow. Actually, you know what? This was a nice tight fit. I'm gonna go ahead and reattach this little elbow right where this little T-fitting is. Why not? Just gonna pull this old line down. This is a 3 8 line, it says it right on the line. I'm gonna make a nice even cut with my new Milwaukee scissors. No advertisement there, just a nice blade and it's got metal handles. <laughs> and right there, 3 8 Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this tubing. Take this splice that was already in it. Oof. This is some good strong tubing. There we go. This line's connected. I'll disconnect this T right here. Whoops. There we go. That's nice and tight. All right, I already went ahead and I plugged in my connector. So now I'm just going to go ahead and hang this baby right back up where it used to go. All right, got my 13 millimeter doused in anti-seize. I'm gonna hand thread this baby right back in here, right into a freshly painted frame, looking generally rust-free. And I'm gonna go ahead and rest this right back up on that hook. Nice. There it is, and I'm gonna go plug in my last connector. Can you see it? I can't. Yep, there it is. Just gotta reach up in there and connect it, and now we can go ahead and tighten down this old box. There we go, there we go. 13 millimeter and all this silver, yeah, that's anti seize. Uh, 
Thank you, Michael Duck. And of course, don't forget to install this bracket facing up. Thank you, Michael Duck. Thank you, Michael Duck. All right, guys, this thing is looking good. Now we just gotta see if it works good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this thing and uh, we'll see if check engine light comes on. Might take a while to find out whether or not it works. The uh, computer's gotta run through its systems. But um, yeah, I think, I think that'll work. <laughs> if not, we got some more hunting to do. But let's try it. Oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Come on, gas station. All right, guys, it's been about a week since I did that EVAP box. So far, no check engine lights after about 200 miles, so that's pretty good. No gross leaks, no small leaks. I think I solved the problem fixing those split tubes. So that's it, guys. Now you know you don't have to be afraid to tackle that evap job just gotta pop off the bumper and uh you could bust some rust while you're at it so don't forget to check out the trailer hitch video and then uh you guys can clean up your whole undercarriage thing while you're at it so that's it guys really appreciate the view remember to like subscribe and i will catch you guys on the next project peace